Welcome to Market Today. We have with us Mr. Rajesh Jajurikar. He is the Executive Director and CEO for the Auto and Farm Sector at Mahindra and Mahindra. Uh, Namaskar Rajesh Ji, a very warm welcome to you. Fantastic set of numbers that uh, uh, the SUV giant M&M has reported. Revenue up 10% year on year to 37,924 crores and profit after tax at 3,171 3 crores has surged 35%. Uh, uh, this is a fabulous performance and the stock is also up about 95% uh, over the last one year. Tell us the trends that you witnessed in the quarter gone by and uh, what were the reasons behind this fantastic rise in profit after tax? Uh, thank you, uh, Shandra, for having me on the show. It's a pleasure to be here as we've just announced our quarter two numbers and nice to talk to you. Uh, let me let me just identify three, four key pillars of growth for the Mahendra Group Consolidated. One, of course, you started by talking about our SUV business. So our SUV business had a very strong, robust uh, growth. Uh, we've uh, grown about 18 uh, percent by way of volume and uh, the PBIT percentage margin has been about 9.5, uh, which uh, you know has impacted uh, the profits in a very, very a uh, positive way where we've got uh, close to 2,000 crores of auto uh, PBIT. Uh, of course, the PAT is lower at the PBIT level. Uh, so, uh, strong auto performance. The two other big drivers of performance have been the Tech Mahindra business, which has put out good numbers. And of course, the second one has been Mahindra Finance. So, both of these as well have put out good numbers. Uh, the farm uh, tractor business has seen a very good gain in market share. But in the first half, we saw a slower uh, industry growth. Industry growth was almost flat uh, for the tractor business. But as we get into the second half, we are much more optimistic hmm. about uh, the rural demand reviving. And we see a uh, growth in the second half for tractors of between 13 to 15 percent. So, uh, which uh, will be very good for the business mm. uh, to see that kind of a momentum come back. Uh, we've seen good early signs of this already in the month of October. Uh, Rajesh ji, you are the closest uh, when it comes to an organization which is uh, uh, at uh, uh, measuring the pulse of the rural landscape in India. A lot of uh, talk has happened that rural incomes are stagnant. Uh, and uh, a lots of pains are visible in terms of uh, uh, tepid demand growth overall in the economy from the rural side. What, what exactly is happening on ground, if you can share with our viewers, in terms of what uh, uh, Mahindra's feedback is in this part of the economic landscape? So uh, let's break this up into multiple things, right? So the first half and a little bit beyond that uh, going to last year, uh, certainly I think what you were saying was uh, what we observed as well, uh, which is a slower rural uh, economy. Let's look at the favorable factors as we are moving mm -hmm. forward. Favorable factors, firstly, has been a really good monsoon. Uh, so, you know, the uh, the monsoon has been way above the LPA. Uh, so we've seen a very favorable monsoon. Second favorable uh, outcome of that has been the reservoir levels uh, are now at a very healthy uh, 87 percent which is again way above the LPA so these are two fundamental areas where you know sentiment and reality on the ground will uh, we'll start seeing the effect of uh, the third positive uh, parameter in rural is the terms of trade of farmers which is really the difference between the input cost and the uh, output price that they realize uh, continues to be favorable so uh, that is a very positive mm -hmm. enabler because then the farmer is left with money uh, in their pocket between the input and the output and some of that has been enabled by Monday prices going up as well. The uh, other factor I want to point out is the government spending which was slow in quarter one which is also a very important part of uh, you know money mm -hmm. being uh, flowing into the rural economy uh, has started to pick up August September onwards and we've seen that in October. Mm -hmm. yeah. So again, that's a key enabler as well. More recently in October, you know, we also track Monday arrivals and uh, especially in the second half of October, we've seen a 20% improvement in Monday arrivals. Now that is uh, again a good measure of uh, 
you know picking up momentum that we are seeing in rural so all in all i think uh, you know going into the future we think the hard part of the rural uh, slow down is behind us uh, because of the multiple levers that i spoke about and we look forward to a good rural demand uh, you know certainly in the second half of this year but hopefully in the next year as well okay uh, let's focus on your mainstay which is uh, uh, the wonderful suvs that uh, uh, M&M &M makes, whether it's uh, Bolero, whether it's uh, uh, XUV, uh, 500, 700, and of course, uh, uh, the eponymous Thar. What has been uh, your understanding of this uh, uh, oft-repeated problem that inventory levels at dealerships uh, are at about 70,000 crore rupees and uh, they are not getting cleared, therefore the pipe is full and uh, we are at the throes of a slightly medium term uh, slowdown in automobile sales in India? So, uh, I'll try and uh, break this into, you know, the industry and m, &M. Uh, So, there have been many reports about industry stock build up and uh, uh, I think at an industry level from what we pick up now, the festival season of takes were very good and uh, most OEMs are back to a very healthy level of dealer inventory. Uh, when it comes to the case of Mahindra, uh, our build-up in inventory was uh, very marginal. We had said like at best four or five days more than our norms. Uh, we too had a very good festival season off day. And today our inventories are way, well below our uh, norms and we are at less than 30 days in inventory. So I think this is, is a thing of the past uh, for the industry as well. And it was not really a very big issue as far as we know. Fair point. So if it is behind us and yours are below uh, average levels, then uh, uh, this is a pain which is best left forgotten. Uh, Mr. Jejurikar, uh, uh, the star performer uh, is likely to be Thar Rocks, uh, a four-door version of uh, uh, your best-selling SUV, Thar. What has been the response? How many bookings have you received? And what is the timeline for delivery? The feedback on the Rocks has been really... Uh... You know, it's not just the numbers, but the emotion and the passion and the excitement around it has been amazing. We're really humbled by it. Uh, we got 176,000 odd bookings in the first hour. Uh, we uh, today are working on how we can ramp up capacity. But at this point of time, the, depending on the model, the delivery okay. period could be between uh, 9 to 15 months. Okay. Uh Let's talk about capacity expansion in two segments, which is auto and farms. Uh, over the next, uh, uh, let's say, 12 months, what is the fresh capacity that is coming into uh, Mahindra and Mahindra on the tractor side and the SUV side? And how do you see that impacting top line and bottom line? So on the auto side, you know, we said we'll have a capacity for our ICE SUVs of about 54,000, so that's in place already. Uh, we will have some additional capacity kick in by Feb, March of an additional 100,000 for our electric origin SUVs. Uh, so that will add, uh, you know, roughly 100,000 annual capacity. On the tractor side, we don't need too much extra capacity. We have set up a new plant on the Swaraj side, uh, which has got commissioned now. So uh, we are we don't have any significant capacity increases plans on that side. Uh, in the case of back to auto, we uh, right now have just you know finished our capacity expansion. In view of the Thar Rocks demand, we may take a look at that afresh. Okay, fair point. In terms of uh, uh, guidance, uh, would you help us uh, in terms of uh, where the OPM is headed and how do you see it getting maintained? Because you have such a long waiting list, uh, I'm sure uh, uh, there is no question for price discounts. Yeah, so uh, we uh, we normally don't give a guidance uh, on you know our margins and so on. So, uh, but I think you we leave it uh, to the analyst to derive based on our track record of performance how we would do. Uh, but uh, you know we we remain optimistic on demand, like you said. But also we are very mindful that we don't want to take advantage of a situation and. Uh, take uh, price increases beyond what customers are willing to pay. So we would like to keep our demand momentum. Okay. Uh, any new models that uh, we will see from the Mahindra and Mahindra stable over the next 12 months post Thar Rocks? 
Yeah, the two big ones, we're launching two new products, electric origin SUVs. Uh, that they are going to be revealed on 26th and 27th of November mm -hmm. and should be in the market in early 2025. More on that after 26, 27. This will be on what platform? There's a new Inglo platform. These are the electric origin SUVs. Fine, sir. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure hosting you. Yeah, appreciate it and was very nice being on the show. This, ladies and gentlemen, was uh, Mr. Rajesh Chijurikar, uh, the CEO of the Auto and Farm Division at Mahindra & Mahindra, whose second quarter earnings have been fantastic. The stock itself is up uh, about 98-99% over the last one year and has come up uh, with a very strong show, profit after tax uh, up 35% uh, year on year and revenue rose 10% in the quarter gone by. Thank you for watching.